attending a fitness conference this year, taking a continuing education course. How well do you consider your goals and what you want to accomplish from the content that you consume? In the world of fitness conference content and fitness association award winners, it can be hard to distinguish between smoke and mirrors. Is all that glitters or has boobs and Botox really substantiated success that you're seeing and want for yourself? Or are you, in fact, seeing the evidence of marketing? The package is the surface. What's inside that matters, right? I'm Deborah Atkinson. You're listening to the Voice for Fitness Professionals podcast, where I provide you with tips on marketing and on sales, especially around marketing and sales to women in midlife so that you can create a business and a life that you love without sleazy, salesy, and pushy strategies to do so. This episode is brought to you by the Flipping 50 Fitness Specialist. We are right now just about to launch a brand new 12-month program. The Flipping 50 Fitness Specialist shares with you practically a business in a box I'm giving to you. The methods that I've been working on improving for the last seven years based on 30 years of practical application before that so that you can help women in menopause establish a hormone balancing exercise program and build a business that has seen no better time than right now for the next decades to come in ways that you can explode your health coaching or personal training or combination business. I'll put a link to that in the show notes so that you can be in on the ground floor. Before I go on in this episode, I do have to say this. I am a presenter at fitness conferences too, and you should look at me with the same scrutiny that you look at anyone else. I've presented internationally since 2000 for associations, including IDEA, NSCA, CanFit Pro, International Council on Active Aging, SCW, Athletic Business Conference, and Fitness Fest, and MedFit multiple times in many cases. I've also published articles for several of them and serve as subject matter expert or advisory board member or committee member for others. Let me talk to you about fitness conference content alarms. Taking advice from a presenter at a fitness conference, talking about making money and programming can be tricky. Consider two very different skill sets. Number one is the science and its practical application broken into daily and weekly action sets that will get your clients and your customers results. Number two is the ability to make business decisions based on profit and loss on profitability and scalability of a program. Two different things. And yet even a third is the ability to look at the much bigger picture of how many lives would be positively influenced from the pursuit of a certain program. Maybe a decision is okay if it's purely for enjoyment and hobby's sake. If it's a business that must pay the bills, support individuals and their families, and ultimately build a legacy, not just to have a spotlight and have fun, then there are different sets to apply and evaluate. Your fitness conference and the experts you follow as a business leader, if only for yourself, someone who pays bills and taxes based not just on what you make, but on what you keep, You need to be sure that you separate these two very carefully, or actually the three that I mentioned. I recommend you look closely at the back end and 
any of your beloved presenters and do your homework. Learn from them. They are some of the best and they are using science to relay programming to you. However, they may have no idea of how to actually implement a profitable program. How do you know? How would you decide? Ask these questions. Is this presenter doing what I'm doing or want to do? Is he or she running a profitable business using the tools and techniques that they're teaching? And does that matter to me? So that's a great question. And I give you that because you may be in the position where this is just your for fun thing. You're passionate about fitness. You love it, love what it's done for you. You don't actually need to make money. And maybe that is the moment that you're in. But if you are suddenly what we call a spontaneous entrepreneur, especially in 2020, because your job status and working for somebody else may have changed dramatically and you're really seriously considering or have had to go out on your own. Then things are very different. What I recommend is you ask yourself, what do I want and how do I define success? Then ask, is this content the main flow focus of the presenter's business life outside of presenting at conferences. Is this the sole exclusive content? Is it the way this presenter makes a living? Because although a university lecturer, for instance, may be a wonderful teacher, that lecturer has a regular paycheck, regardless of the job or the effort that they put in, of course, until somebody evaluates them. And that means that they may not be in private practice for themselves. They may not be revenating generate or generating revenue. In other words, they may not be creating money where money did not exist before. Anybody who's working for someone else for a regular paycheck does not understand what it is to have to go out and promote yourself and sell and create a program and fill it with enough people to leave a large profit margin. And that is something you want to consider as you're going to watch and to follow a leader, make sure that they're going the direction that you want to go. You as an entrepreneur, somebody working on commission, potentially won't have the same luxury as someone who works for a regular paycheck. If you work as a manager of a department, the profitability of your program matters. This year, more than ever, if the profit margin of your programs and services has not supported your business, but has only been supported by the business, by say a membership, you're in a pickle right now. That just doesn't work anymore. If you've created a department of personal training, for instance, that simply extends the life and the success of club members, but really has no profit margin due to the expenses and high commissions paid out with too little revenue coming in, unless there are members without enough members coming through your doors or continuing to follow you online You have not created a sustainable model for this moment in time that we're in. So here's the deal. We don't celebrate anybody's losses. I'll leave that touchy subject that I just touched on alone because it's my educated guess that those trainers, managers, and owners in that position right now are not listening to this episode. They're in a place where survival, not up-leveling, is and has to be their focus. For you, though, listener, it's time to get real. For those sessions that you're choosing and those continuing education courses that you're taking, make sure to filter what you're learning together with from whom you're learning it. So there you have it. It's a sneak peek into how presenters are evaluated or they're not. Never once since 2000, when I first was asked the very first time for the IDEA Personal Training Institute, 
when I first began presenting, never ever did any conference organizer ask to see my tax returns, to see, even though I was going to be speaking about business and building one, did they ask how successfully I had been in building my own? Why would somebody, this is my question for you to think about, why would somebody need a handful of jobs if just one of them were sustaining their lifestyle? It's a question you have to ask. What's, what's the business model of a presenter who has alphabet soup and a, an arm long list of certifications that they've got and an arm long list of titles they hold? How do they earn their money? How do they scale their business? How do they enjoy freedom in their life or do they? And ask yourself, is this a model I want to use for my own? You don't have to get all you need from any one person. I do think you want to choose carefully the individuals you follow and just know that they match your values. They match the direction and the life that you aspire. Did I stir up any questions? Do you have any comments? I'd love to hear from you. No matter what, leave your questions or comments below the show link at fitnessmarketingmastery.com forward slash fitness conference. And any of the resources mentioned earlier in the show, I will leave at the show link as well. What are you waiting for? The world needs you right now more than ever.